Good morning. How's it going? It might not be morning for you, and I realize that, but this podcast is for me, and I don't have to say the correct time for whatever it is for you, because I don't know. That was a bunch of word soup. Uh, Hello. Hi. How's it going? Uh, Finally got another podcast out. This one is me and Mike Spillane, which if you watch our D&D campaigns, he is uh, Alder or Shart from the first campaign. Uh, it was a pretty good conversation. There wasn't much of a topic. I th- we, we had originally planned or hoped to do something else uh, on Monday with the entire group, and then no one could do it, so we just did a podcast together. Um. Yeah, we talk. We'd actually talk about D and D a fair amount because uh, we've been doing that now for almost two years. Yeah, almost two years. Uh, we talk about that. We talk about the UFC fights, the um, Colby Covington versus Kamaro Usman. Because uh, we both watched that, Mike lost some money on it, some fake money, but you'll you'll hear hear him talk about that. Um, yeah, so this was a pretty meandering episode. I think we talk about our, our holiday plans, because right now from it's uh, December tw- 19th, December 19th. So getting ready to do all that sort of stuff. Uh, going to see my family in Florida. It's going to be a lot of running around, because I'm going to Orlando and then to uh, Tampa. And I want to have a car, and my family lives in like eight different places. So... Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't remember. I, I have sleep brain. I just woke up like 30 minutes ago and I wanted to do this before I started work because I want to make sure I get this podcast out at a reasonable time because if not, half the things we talk about are meaningless. So that is going to wrap up the intro. Um, I don't I think I said it in this take, but this was over Skype and the audio is not perfect because it is very digital. Uh, we're going to figure it out. I think having each of us record in audacity like I'm doing now and then just sending the file over will be much better, but we'll see. So enjoy the podcast and that's it. Bye. Okay. Uh, to avoid legal snafus, I'll tell you that you're being recorded. Oh, cool. All right, cool. I didn't hear any of that, so I'm going to see you later. Ah, shit. (laughs) Hey, everyone. Hi. Uh, So we were going to try and do a DD and d one-shot today, Christmas-themed. It is December 16th. Uh, That couldn't happen because everyone was busy except me and Mike. So me and Mike decided to do a podcast, which is what we're doing now. Uh, We don't really have much of a plan. So yeah. I hope you're here for a, a winding ride of a lot of ums, uhs, and so what do you want to talk about? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So <laughs> let's just... <laughs> hey, what's up, dog? Hey, yeah, no, like... <laughs> so, but yeah. what, so what was the, the one shot? Like, what was that going to be? So, yeah, Justin actually was really hyped on the idea. He's actually on his uh, other stream tonight. They're trying to, like end their season i guess is how they're referring to it tonight okay. um top tabling but uh they uh, the, essentially the idea for the one shot was that you guys were going to be playing characters who were like kind of like preteenish age like on the verge of being teenagers and you guys were all going to be um orphans essentially in an orphanage okay uh, and it was going to be christmas eve uh, whichever one of you had basically like the highest passive perception uh, was going to, uh, and I was going to end up writing it out so that way it could all be Christmas punny and stuff. Uh, right. So, you know, you were going to hear clatter on the roof and uh, that person was going to know that it was Santa. Um, however, that person was then going to see Santa get his ass beat. Um, and guess what? The next part of the campaign was that you were trying to prove to everyone else in the house that Santa was real, but then you were going to discover Krampus who you were going to have to fight and defeat. 
um, Santa was going to be tied up in the basement. So if you decided that you wanted to go and try and enlist his help, you could have tried to go and free Santa, um, which I was going to basically make Santa like a level 15 wild magic barbarian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he was literally just going to go into a rage. As soon as he goes into rage, crazy magic shit was going to start happening to help you guys defeat Krampus. Is that a build <laughs> that exists? Wild magic That's... barbarian? Yes, it was something that was done in uh, on, the, one of the later like Unearthed Arcana builds. Okay. Um, but yeah, basically it's like when you go into Rage, uh, you have to roll a D8, and depending on what you like, roll, a certain spell effect basically starts happening to go along with your Rage. Oh, that's great. Dude, it honestly is one of those things where if I were... If I were to bring Shart back, essentially, it would. Um, it, I I almost think it would make sense for him to have some kind of magical abilities because he, you guys all had stuff, so maybe he would like change his pathing a little bit, kind of thing. Yeah, just like uh, dip one level in, so he's like, I'm a warlock. Yeah, basically. Well, that's part of the reason why I kind of like made a joke that I wanted to take the magic initiate feat, because uh, magic initiate you don't have to be like any kind of caster at all. Mm-hmm. but if you could take that you could take that feat and i think basically it's like learn a cantrip and a spell from any class oh that's so i would cool. have done it to just learn eldritch blast to just be like <laughs> hey, i can do it too like <laughs> oh i kind of want you to do that now yeah because I, th- I always thought it would be funny but <laughs> um but you know uh, yeah i, I always thought it'd be fun but that was the like basic thing of the spell uh, or of the of the one shot the basic mm-hmm. idea behind it and uh, the thing that was actually kind of funny is uh, with doing all the social media for Junk Drawer Show and stuff, I started, um, like, I started basically, rec- like, uh, following all the different pages for different things that we use. And Roll20 for, like, as a Christmas gift, basically put out, like, uh, a dungeon tiles pack mm-hmm. that was, like, a holiday cabin. Oh, so it was okay. one of those things that it like legitimately would have been perfect to use to try and like set up a map and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I know Justin picked it up, so it's something that we might end up seeing, but it, it basically just kind of looks like a little like cabiny kind of setup thing. Uh, it's pretty cool though. So I could see him doing that after we get out, out of, uh, the, the mountain, the mountain yeah. prison. Like the first place we find is a cabin. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that happening. I kind of hope it does now, since we have yeah. next week or tomorrow. Yeah. But. Yeah, we play tomorrow, and we're officially breaking out of prison or dying in prison. So yeah. we'll find One out how it goes. Oh we'll man, tune in, tune in to find out. Dude, sometimes I want to replay. I want to keep out. playing Absidy. Like I miss playing that character. Oh yeah, I definitely understand that. Like I'm like enjoying, I, I'm enjoying Dremel, but at the same time, it's just we. I think a year and a half. Or was it a full about, year? About a year and a half. Yeah, so it was a long time that we spent with those characters, so it's, it's weird mm-hmm. to not play with them now. Like, if we had more yeah. time, I would say we should do some of those, but one day a week is, is a lot to ask of five people, you know? Exactly, yeah. And I, I definitely feel you on that. Like, playing Shart was super fun. I definitely, there was parts of it that, like, felt like they were, like, becoming monotonous for me, but that's because my character like wasn't bright didn't have a whole lot of you know a whole lot to him at times where we obviously developed more story to go around him um so i'm actually enjoying playing a new character more than i thought i was going to um but i I definitely wouldn't have a problem dipping back into shart playing him a little bit here and there i think that would be fun still too yeah yeah we'll talk to justin maybe we'll do like a one shot at some point oh yeah especially if, if everyone's busy or like two people are busy on a Thursday or on a Tuesday. Yeah. So we can always well, invite other people on. That's true. That's true. One of the other things that I saw too is um, one of the guys that I work with, who's also super into D and D. He, um, the one of the guys who's like the head of creative content at uh, Wizards of the Coast, uh, Chris Perkins. He ended up like putting out a tweet saying, "Working on a new project for early release in uh, 2020," and he's like you Ravenloft Curse of Strahd fans are going to be super hyped. So that oh, kind of makes me think that maybe there's going to be an expansion or like sequel to Curse of Strahd. Like a Return uh, of Strahd or something. Yeah. could I mean, it's a possibility, and that's the guy who legitimately writes content for Wizards of the Coast. So Shit. Who knows? Maybe we'll see something cool. Yeah, man. The band I'd be back for together. That. Hell yeah. Man, that, that would be weird. I'm, I'm glad we have at least one person from the last campaign playing. 
Yeah, but as, as Doc, but yeah, I I, I, I still definitely... did I ever tell you anything about my one shot? No, I haven't. I mean, we yeah, we never really got into your one shot or what Pat's. Well, well I mean, Pat told me things about his, and I thought he was it was literally just going to result in a TPK. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Pat likes to do. Yeah, but so I I plan mine out pretty well. I won't I won't go fully into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll I will because. We'll get to it eventually. I mean, yeah, like, maybe. I don't know. Like, I if I do it, I want to do it in person. Gotcha. That, okay, so, so I I don't mm-hmm. know when that would happen. Yeah. So just to follow up with people at home, I live in Colorado now. I don't know if there's been a podcast that has said that, but I moved from Florida to Colorado, so that's where I'm at now. That's why I have the beard. That's the only reason. You literally never had a beard before that. It's just as soon as he went to Colorado, it just sprouted immediately. I couldn't grow facial hair. Yeah, I need to move to Colorado, apparently. You'll just a big, massive Thor-like beard. I'll just be in Colorado for like a week, pretend like I moved there, and then come back and hope it stays. I think that's enough. Yeah, it might work. So the, the basic idea, though, was uh, I found a black dragon's lair, and I, I like mapped it all out. There's a couple traps, and there's different ways you can go. There's some puzzles. And then like as you go through, you see a bunch of kobolds, and then you see some rats, and you see some... like. Like all, all the all the things aren't they don't act like you would expect them to. So you okay. see, you know, like a dungeon's uh, dragon's lair is gonna have like gold and and whatever a black dragon has. It's like swamp, mm-hmm. but everything would just be like slightly off. So if your if your passive perception was high enough, you'd you'd kind of pick up on it. Yeah. And depending on the path you go, I I don't remember exactly how I did it, but it it ends up being a mind flare that had taken over a dragon and oh. all his like inhabitants. So you could get to the dragon. And the dragon would, you'd have to fight him and then fight the Mind Flayer. Or if you mm-hmm. solved the puzzle correctly, you'd, you'd go around it and go directly to the Mind Flayer. Damn, that would be cool. Yeah. I was pretty, Honestly, I'm pretty pumped for it one day. I, I think still you guys have know the it, character. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I still have the character built for that. And that character was one of the ones that I was like most excited to play. Um, I'm bringing up my phone real quick just because some of his stats were ridiculous. So I want to like share like you that. really well. I, w- I was nine, right? Uh, yeah, you were at level nine and, um, I didn't roll as well as I did for other characters, um, that I, that I've created, but it was, he was still pretty good. And, um, he was a halfling, uh, rogue monk. Okay. So he had a base walking speed of 50 <laughs> <laughs> and, um, a hit, well, He'd he'd win the passive perception tests. What was it? Uh, his passive perception is twenty one. Oh, shit. <laughs> um. Let's see. Well, because he's got some of those things. So his like perception is a plus eleven. His stealth is a plus thirteen. Uh, because he has things that he can have double proficiency in. Mm-hmm. Um. It. Yeah, but um, like realistically, because I also had um, he's got the like the mobile feet. Uh, so he could use his, like, he uses act, move, uh, he can move, use his movement, use his action to move, um, use his bonus action to do, um, you know, step of the wind, which would be another one. So that's 150 feet in one turn. Um, but then he also has another thing that he could do because I made him a shadow monk. Um, so he could do, um, shadow step, which is when you're in dim light or darkness, which sounds like that's probably, probably where we would be. Uh, I can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space. <laughs> <laughs> so like legitimately it's like my guy just, he's running around crazy. But the other thing too, that I did with him is I had him take a dip in, in rogue. So that way, like the first attack, if, if I'm like hiding, like you did with Absidy mm-hmm. uh, at the first you know, the first time that I come out and make an attack on someone, I can get sneak attack on it. Um, even though it's just going to be a level one sneak attack, so it's only like an additional, what, D6, I think it is? Yeah, that sounds right. But still, like, I got, had proficiency in crossbow, so I could, like, literally pop out, take an attack, and then run up to someone and punch them two or three times because monk stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> Dude, monks are wild. That's part of the reason why I wanted to, uh, why I built it, is I wanted to try playing that kind of, pl- playing a monk. And I was like, ah, dip and rogue will be fun, you know. Maybe that would be one for um, well, I don't know for uh, the one shot at Pat's wedding. Yeah, maybe he was talking about doing. I don't know if he wanted to get 
the original crew back together or not. But that might be a time for you to do it. Well, I'll be there. So I don't, I don't know what his plan is. It's more so the what what ends up happening. And, you know, honestly, if, if Justin ends up being able to do it, you know, he's got a lot of other stuff on his plate, too. So, yeah. You know, yeah, we'll but see that's still three months away. Yeah. So, so the play, I'm, I, we're driving separately, right? Like, I'm going to fly into Tampa. I think that's the plan, just because, especially if we're doing like, um, like wedding getting ready stuff, Mal's not going to, Mal's coming up with me, but Mal's not going to be getting ready with us, like pre wedding, because that's, mm-hmm. so it, it just makes sense to take two separate cars. So that way, you know, she can still drive there and, get around and then if we're doing guy stuff if she doesn't want to be a part of it she can go back to the place guy stuff yeah i mean realistically i I want her to hang around with us so yeah yeah i mean it's except for like the the like bachelor party part or like the pre is he having a bachelor party i don't know i mean his his best man is his friend from jersey Mm -hmm. andrew so i uh i don't know him too well i think i've talked to him a couple times but I, uh, I don't know if he's got anything planned. I know okay. I'm a groomsman for Gabe's wedding too, and his, his best man has been is like trying to plan like three different bachelor parties. I'm like, dude, the wedding's already in Mexico. Like, <laughs> yeah, keep it cheap, keep it local. <laughs> like, he's like, maybe we could all fly out to Costa Rica. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did this guy just like come put... from money or what? No, he comes from drugs. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, same thing. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, his name is Michael, but he goes by Troll. Uh, so okay. <laughs> you can kind of get an idea from there. Yeah. Um, Does he no, look but like he, a troll? A little bit. Kind yeah. of like bus face? <laughs> uh, not, yeah, kind of. But he, he, uh, yeah, no, he's, he, he, like, he, he's one of the slowest moving human beings I've ever seen in my life. Um, like, so just, his name he, is accurate. Yeah, no, it, it totally makes sense. Um, but no, he's like Gabe's best friend. So that'll be, uh, it'll be a good time. But no, he, he literally went from let's, maybe we go to this music festival in Miami to, or we could go to Costa Rica. I'm like, how will do those two things work well, they're together? Both yeah. They're both fun. And one is significantly cheaper than the other. <laughs> like, yeah. well, one is reasonable. Yeah. Cause I mean, Gabe actually lives up in Atlanta too. So I was, that that's where troll is. Uh, no, I think troll you know what? He's somewhere. <laughs> He's wherever the wind takes him. That is something that is super legitimate. Yeah. Dude, it got so dark early. Or it got dark so early today. I feel like I, feel like I wouldn't be able to adjust to that well over there. Just because, obviously, you being further north of the equator, you start seeing the darkness roll in sooner. Yeah. So it's one of those things that, like, I mean pretty much as south as we can get in in the united states like yeah pretty so much. it's one of those things where i'm like oh no it just hits late and then mal's like yeah no it's already dark over here i'm like oh yeah you're actually further north than this because she's in yeah. uh, my girlfriend mal's in uh los angeles right now yeah so yeah and it's like honestly it's not too bad it's just so i, I was out getting eli a bunch of those smash pennies for christmas okay and I was just like walking around downtown finding different places that had it because when they were out here, they didn't get to go to a lot of them because I told my mom, don't go downtown between 11 and 1 because you won't find parking and it'll stress you out. So she goes downtown at 1130. Didn't listen to me at all. So she didn't park anywhere and they never got any of the coins. So, yeah. So I I went to go get them and just like I got there around 3 and it was fine because the sun was still out. And then by 415, I'm like, my hands are all red and couldn't warm them up in my pockets yeah yeah but that, that's that i don't know that's the big thing about it getting dark early is it gets cold too yeah because it's fine during the day because we're so close to the sun you know yeah what's the um what's like the weather out there like right now um right now it is 25 degrees so it's a high of 34 and a low of 19 it is 71 over here right now. <laughs> Gross. Shay, you asshole. Sorry, Wait, my dog just walked... Go ahead. My dog just walked in and literally laid down, farted, and it's just chilling. So At least she stayed. She didn't yeah. bail on you. Yeah, but now I have to live with the smell. Yeah. Ass. So it's, it's 71 at, what, 9 o'clock at night? 
Uh, yep, that is uh, correct. If you could see that, I'm I pulling can. a Giuliani right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like that. You could see here, I didn't, uh, all the evidence right here, I texted him, and, uh, you know, no collusion. So, <laughs> What's the weather this weekend? Um, well, Wednesday is actually cold. Um, no, 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 this uh, weekend. It's all about no. me. Oh, this weekend, that's right, you're getting here. Uh, Saturday, uh, it looks like it, it's rainy this weekend, actually. Um, Saturday is a low of 61, a high of 71. Okay. Uh, Sunday, low of 57, high of 70. Monday, 56, uh, high of 69. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, I can do I can do that. 70s yeah, no, and 60s. It's not hot with not hot right now. It's like so warm at night, <laughs> but it's not really hot. Oh, that's the thing that oh, that's what bugged me so much living there is even at night walking out and just feeling feeling the water from the air stick all over me. Yeah, I mean, I know it's taboo to talk about him, but, like, Louis C.K.'s stand-up, there is, like, some parts of it that still just resonated with me so much, especially being, like, a slightly overweight guy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I remember he talked about is how, like, he's just, you know, if he's outside walking around, it just always feels like there's just, like, a cup of water between his asshole and his, <laughs> and his balls. And I'm just like, oh, I feel that so much. Like, legitimately, it just feels like there's just... Like a, a bottle of water just blew up in my pants. <laughs> and it was warm water. Yeah, warm water. Like it was left in the car for like three days in the middle of summer. <laughs> oh, no, and all the plastic erodes into it. Yeah, so you wouldn't even drink it anyways. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope no one drinks your taint sweat. Well, no, no one drinks. I'm just referring to the bottle of water, like why it was sitting in the car for so long. Yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm pivoting and saying that I hope no one does that. I uh, me too. I don't think anyone has yet. I wonder. I um, wonder. There's got to be someone out there who's like, you know what I want? I want like some white kids taint sweat. I just want to drink yeah. it. You find that person, and if they got you know like twenty bucks, <laughs> twenty bucks for, for an entire bottle. Well, no, for an entire bottle, that's gonna take some time. But like a vial, like, <laughs> a vial, like a something vial. like that, twenty bucks. You got it. Taint sweat is coming your way, creep. <laughs> Just enough to fill a five-hour energy. Yo, do you know how much, like, people get for, like, feet pics? I'm sure a lot. Dude, it's so much money. How much do they get like, paid? Oh, like, one picture of a girl's feet? She could sell that to someone for, like, 100 bucks. Really? Like, I know people are weird, and some dudes like to jerk off to pictures of feet. Like, my, you know, you're not a kid. Go for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> if feet turn you on, by all means... Like, but it, it's one of those things where I'm just kind of like, like, are my feet cute? Could I like paint my toenails and pretend I got girl feet? Like it would never work. But you, could you? Do you have fat feet? I don't have. I, I feel, you have soccer feet though. I yeah, that's the thing is like I, I might not look like much now, but I used to play a lot of soccer in my life. Um, so my feet are like just gross. <laughs> Like, I'd have to do it after I got a pedicure because, like, I need my feet to look pretty. Yeah. And also, guys, don't be insecure about getting a pedicure. It's totally worth it. How much is it? You can get a pedicure for, like, 40 bucks. Oh, uh, but that's, They're like, 40 McChickens. Oh, we're back to that? Yeah, that's still that's how, how we, I measure things. That's how we measured things in high school. <laughs> yeah, I haven't changed. And also, that's totally not accurate based on inflation. <laughs> How much are they now? A McChicken's probably like two bucks. No way. I don't. I haven't gone to McDonald's in forever. McChicken cost maybe it's like a dollar twenty-five. I mean, I'm pretty sure a McDouble's like a buck seventy. One thirty. McDouble is one forty. I don't think that's accurate. Um, it's on the internet. Because I. Look, well, actually, Mc look, no collusion. <laughs> okay yeah no oh it focused at the last second as you pulled it away okay. um no but actually that's that is a lie because right now mcdoubles are part of the two for three deal um so two mcdoubles Ooh. for so yeah there you go it's a buck 50 at minimum damn maybe it's different areas lawyered <laughs> fucking lawyered. lawyered but you know how it's it's like more expensive at airports or cheaper in more rural areas See, that's the thing that's weird is like Mal legitimately texted me today. And she's like, how the fuck is my Starbucks cheaper here? <laughs> is it really? I guess whatever she ordered was cheaper out in L.A. I'm like, like, is there a soy milk shortage out here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Do they make that, soy out there? Maybe. I don't know. I don't. 
I'm not a vegan. I don't yeah, care. me <laughs> either. Yeah. I did have hemp protein, though, and that was pretty good. Did you get super baked? Yeah, dude. I was like, Carl, what's up? I'm going to like listen to Rastafari music now. <laughs> I didn't totally lift weights because it's protein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. No, I, I won't tell that story on air. So, oh, no. Yeah. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you after. After we get is up, I'll tell you. Okay. Is it scandalous? It's not really scandalous. It's just like. I yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I so. I know exactly where that's going. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you probably do. Uh, <laughs> so, since we can't talk about that, uh, Christmas, what are you doing? Because I'll be back for two, three days, two and a half days in Orlando, and then I'm going to St. Pete and then Tampa. Okay, so uh, Christmas Day, um, meeting up with my folks out in Davenport at my grandma's house. Um, Christmas Eve is usually just me and Mal hanging out, uh, exchanging like pajamas and like watching Elf and making cookies and shit. Yeah, yep. Um, aside from that, probably just wrapping Christmas gifts and getting ready for stuff. We might go to Universal uh, at some point to try and catch Grinch- Grinchmas. If mm-hmm. not, there's Chris- there's Christmas lights around Crane's Roost, and we haven't gotten a chance to like walk around and do that stuff yet. Oh right, so okay. Might do that, but I have to finish up a couple Christmas gifts, and that's pretty much it. Because we're so, not doing like Christmas gifts as a group this year, which is a little bit lame, but I totally understand. So yeah, like I I wanted to, but then with two of the the five kind of being like money's tight this year. I'd rather yeah, just have us put like a small amount into junk drawer. No, I'm with you there. Like, that's the thing is like, it's at least something, I mean, we're all doing it. We're all working towards it. If some of us have an extra a couple bucks to invest in it, it makes sense. But I, I just like giving people stuff like, I know. Stuff. like, I mean, last year, what is it? When it was just the, the four of us before Carlos came in, I, I mean, I got you guys like a, a gift bag that ended up having like eight different things in it or something like that yeah, like I, yeah. there was a bunch of little fucking goodies in there just because it's like okay like yeah it's not the most expensive stuff in the world but everyone likes having a lot of things to open because it makes it more fun <laughs> yeah and it's all stuff like i haven't put them on anywhere yet i thought about putting because that was when you gave the the books right like the dope rhymes book yeah mm-hmm. i thought about putting it on there and then i just didn't yet because i was going to use that for like remember there was a couple stickers and things like that. Yeah, there were stickers and there was a, a pin uh, in there, a D20 pin. Yeah, I was going to just put those all on the Dope Rhymes book because that was going to be Absidy's um, uh, book of the tome, whatever it is. Yeah. So, which I still probably will if we ever bring that character back. But um, so the you're not going back to Newport Richie at all? No, because Christmas we usually end up spending with... Um, we usually end up spending with my grandma, so that's usually out at her place. Um, okay. And then, it, like it's, we were talking before stream, with the line of work that I'm in, it's hard to take time off around, around unfortunately, hard to take time off around the holidays, um, which stinks, but, I mean, it's part of what the job is. Would they let you work from home those days? Um, Some of the days, yes. Um, but I, like they changed our work from home structure a little bit. Okay. So I can work from home on three days a week, but it's a set three days. Oh, you don't get to choose. No, I don't get to choose. That's the, that's part of the reason they wanted to like, cause they're like working towards allowing us to have a more, you know, uh, like work from home, like flex, flex schedule. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but they, they want to try and have a little bit of control over it. So that's why they're making it so that it's like you have uniform days to do it on. Like that's the way it was previously too, but, um, yeah, that's the way it was previously too. But now with how they're doing it, it's kind of more so like they changed the days that we could do it. Like it used to be, uh, like Friday was one of the days that we could do it. Uh Or it used to be, like, Monday and Friday, so we could literally, like, basically be home through, like, the whole weekend kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But now now Mondays we have to go in the office, so. Uh, But I can still work from home on Fridays, which is fine. That's good. Yeah. I always liked working – I liked Mondays more when I was going into the office. Because Monday was, like, the – like, that was the kind of getting back into it. Yeah. So, like, if I had a long weekend, I could could sleep a little bit longer since I had an Mm -hmm. hour-long commute. 
And Fridays are sure. like our fun day, you know. I don't know about mm-hmm. your office, but like my office on Fridays, maybe we would play like Munchkins or some game. I don't so know. So it was nice to be in the office for that. You don't know what it Munchkins. is? Hold yeah. On. Oh no, he's leaving. Uh, this is a time to let you know that we currently have a sponsor. Uh, the sponsor is your mom. <laughs> uh, dude, I got him so good. You completely missed it. Oh no. To this? Yeah. You never played it? No, I never played it before. So it's like um, it's like a dungeon delving card game. Kind of think oh, honestly, think Dungeons and Dragons. So you okay. have a character and you have to get to level ten. And as you go through, you you draw cards from this okay. deck, and then it'll be some kind of monster. And if you're stronger than it, you beat it, and you go up a level and you get treasure. If you can't beat it, you then do whatever the bad stuff is. Sometimes it's losing a level. Sometimes it's losing your cards. Whatever. Um, cool. You can ask people to help you out. You can have uh, classes, races, and weapons, armor. It's fun. It's like a 45-minute game. Okay. But it's That's just fun. like, especially if you're drinking, it's great. Yeah. Because it doesn't okay, take a gotcha. lot of thought, but it's like enough gotcha. thought that you start yelling at each other. Gotcha. So it's it's basic. It's it's D and D without the strategy. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much without the role play yeah. for sure. Good. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but going back like our our office we don't always have like fun things to do like this week it's like kind of like a fun week like tomorrow they're catering lunch for everyone in the office wednesday they're doing uh like getting like bringing in like a hot cocoa bar so like you know you can make fancy hot cocoa which i did last year and it was really tasty but i'm not doing it this year Uh, i'm gonna work from home that day instead oh okay um, well, honestly, I have to go pick up Mal at the airport. Her flight's supposed to get in at like 6.15 or something like that. And I get off at 5.30. So if I'm out in Lake Mary to get to the airport, it's a lot more difficult than Altamont to the airport. So Either way, the traffic just at 5 it, is going to be rough. Uh, it's going to suck, like, no matter what. Because there's not like a good way to get to the airport. Well, it's literally just take Semeron until you get to it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just leave at 6. Because it's going to take her well, half an hour to get off the plane anyway. It's true. It's true. That'll help you so, out a lot, traffic-wise. Yeah. But anyways, no, but... And then Friday is going to be dope. So Friday is our Christmas party, so... Oh, nice. Which is, like, the first... It's the same... Basically, like, the same theme as last year, which is fine by me because it immediately made me think of The Office um, because <laughs> it's a casino night theme, essentially. Okay. So, like, they, br- they bring in a bunch of, like, gambling tables and, like, so there's, like, roulette and there's blackjack and hold'em and yeah, yeah, yeah. not actually betting anything, but, like, still... I mean, it's fun. And then, obviously, they give out, like, a shit ton of prizes. Like, they gave out Nintendo Switches last year. There was, like, a 60-inch TV... And it's all just, it's not like, it, uh, just basically everyone gets a raffle ticket when you come in and yeah. you just hope that your ticket gets pulled. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had that last year. I was bummed. I couldn't go to my, my company's one this year. Oh yeah. Yeah. They just couldn't fly me back. And I wasn't like, I, you I weren't was, about to pay, pay for it yourself. <laughs> no. Cause, and I was there the week before for the mm. Savage race. And then I knew I'd be coming back for Christmas and I just, I couldn't justify dropping another like $300 to have to work. And then yeah. find somewhere to stay and not have a car. And it's just, you know, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But I get to go to uh, JC's Christmas party on Thursday. Which would be That's cool. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Jordan was going to come, but he has to raid that night. No, oh, well, you know what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's legit. It's, like, he's got 39 people depending on him, you know. I understand that. It's still so weird to me that you hang out with JC. Yeah, I've gone I've gone through every iteration of the Green Children. You legitimately have. Yeah. Like we were we were friends with Jillian pretty much up until college. Then yeah. we lived with Tim at one point during college. Well, I was his RA and yeah. then we lived together. That's true. So I had that extra year. And then like I never real I obviously I never got the JC iteration, but like it's just so weird that you guys like do you live in the same complex or does she just like live five minutes up the road from you or something? Is that yeah, what it she, is? So I like I live close to the Broncos field and she okay. lives close to um Coors. Not Coors. Yeah, Coors, of course, the baseball one. Yeah. Yeah, so, that makes sense. So it's not far and And then neither of you live close to the uh Dick Sporting Goods Park because that's eight miles outside of Denver. Yeah, and it's like it's in the northeast too out yeah. toward the the airport that's one of the things that uh, I've, i literally on soccer twitter i see people griping about saying that even though they were one of the first people to build a soccer specific specific stadium they should be uh the second franchise to build a second one 
<laughs> because, because of, of the location. fact that because of the fact that they built it almost 10 miles outside of the city. Yeah. That seems to be a thing with Denver though, because the, yeah. the airport too is, you know, 30 minutes East. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's just like a thing that we're like, I, I mean, it, being in Orlando, it's like, you're almost kind of spoiled with because Orlando is just a massive city. Like there's so many different like subsections of Orlando and like different or subdivisions of Orlando that like, Orlando just seems like it's a city that's just so huge. There's a lot of me. urban sprawl. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those things. It's like, oh, yeah, no, like I'm uh, I'm not going downtown. I'm going to the Milk District instead, or I'm going to go hang out at Mills 50, or yeah. I'm going to go up to, you know, College Park, or, you know, I'm going to actually go to East Orlando. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that, for sure. Because, I mean, obviously, I've never been to Denver, but um, like I said, I'm still kind of pissed at Pat's wedding because... I wanted to strategically plan the away day for Orlando City to go to this year for the game in Colorado. Oh, yeah. Reason A is last time there was a game in Colorado, the supporters groups for Orlando were, like, all over it. Like, they were like, oh, yeah. yeah, oh, wait, there's a game in Denver? Like, we're going to that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> the Mile High City. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Francis? <laughs> um, wait, when anyways. it's at the end of March, right? No, it's the week before his fucking wedding. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck that. <clears throat> yeah, so it's one of those things that just time-wise, it would be such a pain in the ass to try and pull off going to Colorado the week before his wedding and then taking three days off around his wedding. Oh, do we have to take off three days? Well, I'm. we were talking about getting there on Thursday. Um, Getting there on Thursday... Then Friday is the rehearsal dinner. Then Saturday is um, the, wedding. the wedding. And then Sunday he wants to go to the aquarium. So if we're going to be spending the day at the aquarium, are we going to drive home after the aquarium? Or True. are we going to stay there one additional night and then go home on Monday? That's fair. Because, I mean, if it ends up being the four of us getting a house and just kind of all staying there, you know, it ends up being with fees at most $100 a person for the hotel. Um or for the house that we'd be renting. Yeah. Um, so it's more so we need to settle that as a group to determine what we're going to do. So Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to make Justin drive back by himself, but also it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to drive eight hours and then have to fly four when I can just fly for three. Yeah. No, I understand. But I'll definitely fly into Tampa. Yeah. Because that'll be fun. As long as I, I got to start looking at flights. Speaking of flights, the... um. The weekend that we're trying to do the suit yeah. fitting and everything. Um, yeah. Did you see in the group chat? I was talking about how the Connor Cowboy yeah. fight is that weekend. Man, that is the best segue I think you could have possibly done. That worked <laughs> out so well. Um, yeah, no, me I, me and Pat actually talked about that a little bit today. Uh, that just made that weekend work out so much better for an ultimate like bros weekend. Yeah, like I'm, I'm set to buy the tickets like ASAP as long cool. as that's locked in. Yeah, I think we should um, definitely try and get a confirmation from Pat um, and Justin that that weekend works for everybody. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, definitely book that. Because, I mean, the only thing that I was talking to uh, Pat about, and I just don't know if he, like, doesn't realize it or what. He's like, yeah, man, we'll, like, go to Duffy's or something to watch the fight. I was like, yeah, but, like, if we go to the Duffy's in Altamont, like, the last couple fights that I remember them doing when I was hosting trivia and stuff there um, – they charge like a cover fee and he's like what they never charge i was a like fee. i was they, they were trying to they, they've been trying to before like what was it i think it was um a oh, shit what boxing fight was it i think it was canelo versus triple g they were charging ten dollars a head to come in maybe it was for boxing though because i i maybe. mean i went to a lot of fights there and they never charge cover once yeah, okay. Because, yeah, because I, I was like, I mean, I, I think Pat said they weren't charging a cover this this past one. I was like, okay. Because I'm like, I, I just, I know that I feel like they would charge a cover if it's Connor. Like, and he's like, he's like, well, th this was the biggest card of the year. I was like, yeah, it was the biggest card of the year. But how many big name fighters that are like actually f like huge name people that people care about were on that card? Yeah, like I know fighters care about it. Like I loved that card. Yeah, like, exactly. well, dude, it was a, Covington was it was insane. a three title. It was a three title card. 
Like yeah. they, it's not common for UFC to have three title fights on a card. And I'm with you. I only saw highlights for the most part, but there's something about Covington getting knocked out and then sprinting out of the ring that <laughs> yeah. I just think is poetically beautiful. Yeah, dude. And he's, he's such a good fighter, even though his, his character is so shitty. Like he's yeah. just, he's just a dick, but he's, he's, he's so good. Like he gave Usman yeah. a run for his money. Like that was a close oh, absolutely. fight. I, I don't necessarily agree with what the scorecards were saying. The fight was though. I don't know if you saw that, that came yeah, out. Yeah. Three, one, one, three and two, two. Yep, exactly. I think it's, I think it's very weird to have, I, I could see being three, one and two, two, twos, but for someone to have it three, one and then the other person to have it one, three is just kind of shocking. I feel like. Yeah, well, uh, which fight? One of the fights, it might have been... Who fought right before them? Uh, right wasn't before Nunes. them. No, right... Um, Max Holloway. Was it Max Holloway? Yeah, Max Holloway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Max Holloway and uh, Vander... Vander, Vander, Vander. Yeah, what, uh, <laughs> the Australian guy, right? Yeah, but I think it was that card where it was like 48-47, 48-47, and then 50-45. Ooh. Like... It was not a fifty forty five, like match. Like it was, it's it like, not like the fight that I lost money on, which I like, lost fake money on, yeah. uh, <laughs> because I heard Uriah Faber just got his shit pushed in. I <laughs> I I got to where did I go? I got I I got to the stream that I found. Uh, oh, totally uh, allegedly, legal? yeah, I, my ESPN Plus stream. I found I got that right at. Uh, Uriah, like right at the end of it, so I wasn't really paying attention to gotcha. it. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you, I? I just miss the days where people used to be able to stream it on Twitch, but they would still have a face cam on and pretend like they were just playing UFC, the video game, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and great. the real fight was just playing behind them. Because there was a guy oh. who was doing that, and he got caught. <laughs> oh man, or just like a fake reaction, like, whoa, yeah, cool. <clears throat> Yo, one thing I want to do is do, I, we tried to do it, like Pat and I did, but it never worked out, doing a fight companion for one of the fights. Oh, like where you watch along and give your own commentary? Yeah, I mean, just talk shit like we're doing now, but do it while the fights are going on. Oh, yeah, I would love that. Do you like, have granted, ESPN Plus? I'm, I, I, uh, I do, I do have ESPN Plus. Cause we so could if we did the, like a free, like a, a fight night or something where it's not a pay-per-view. That's what I was like, thinking, yeah. Yeah. Because that'd be super yeah, we, easy, like we just set stuff up. Just get this. I bring on another plug in one of my other monitors and bring the fight up on that. Yeah, even if it's a prelim. Because there's a lot of videos that are just there all the time. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't have to do it live. Live would be cool, but I just that'd be a lot of fun. No, absolutely. And also, I I think the the thing that was funniest, and, um, like, this is me delving into politics again, but I... I, uh, a, one of the sports writers who I follow, and I actually like talk with him a good amount on Twitter, which is weird. <laughs> um, and, and he's he's predominantly like a soccer writer. He writes for the Athletic, um, and, and he basically just like shared Fox Sports Australia, um, you know, a, a post about the fight, and it's like a brutal slugfest. The UFC's most hated man, Colby Covington, just had his jaw broken and then got TKO'd as Kamara Usman retains at U- UFC 245 and then he retweeted it saying, "He did this to, a, to <laughs> he did this to the MAGA guy. You love to see it." <laughs> and then I just commented back saying, "He also sprinted to the locker room immediately after the fight and then complained about tw- on Twitter about the offici- officiating. Pretty comical." And then he just said, "A MAGA dude complaining on Twitter? Why I never." <laughs> yeah dude him complaining about that was such bullshit like there was no way he was getting out of that no that's my thing like dude like you're complaining about thinking that usman is like faking shit and uh, i'm I'm getting like the crazy hair thing going on right now just because it's one of those things where i'm like getting heated about it like there is a clip of you extending to punch and then doing this right before you release into his head like dude you're fucking poking him in the eye i thought his hand was already out that, that me and Pat rewatched it today at lunch, and it looks like he does have a fist and then extends the fingers. Oh, like, okay. Which it's like, dude, no, you you were in showing intent to poke him in the eye because even if you did this and then went to that, or if you just started at that, it doesn't really matter because you're literally forcibly putting your arm towards his head with your fingers out. Yeah. Like, 
you're that that's fucking intent like and uh, not that that's the worst thing in the sport but dude if you poke somebody in the eye to the point to where they can't see yeah they're obligated to go ahead and get righted before they continue the fight yeah and then trying to claim an eye poke at the end i think it was at the end of the fifth round it's like was right it? before he, yeah right before he got knocked out he like oh i got poked in the eye no, I mean, they showed the replay, and it looked like maybe his knuckle hit him, but it wasn't, it was nowhere near the yeah. poke. Yeah, see, I didn't see that highlight, so I can't comment on that, but that's the thing, is he's saying that Usman's faking injuries, and then, like, basically what you're saying is that now he tried to fake an injury, so it's like, dude, you can't you can't have it both ways. Yeah, like, and that's what it seemed like. There was also the, the junk shot on Usman, but I, I, I didn't see that one either. Yeah, like I heard about it. I was talking to Pat about it, and he said that it was it hit the cup, and that's what like Mm -hmm. hit the because it it, it looked like it hit above not above the waist, but like at the waistline. Mm -hmm. So I I didn't think it was a a nut shot, but it was enough for um, what's the guy's name? The referee? Uh, was it? uh, It starts with an M. Um, Michelangelo. It was enough for Michelangelo (laughs) to stop the fight. So yeah, I know it wasn't Mergliata because he's huge. Yeah. Um, I mean his name is Big Dan. Is there Maybe, Coleman? I, I can't remember. 100%. I want to say Rob Coleman, but I know that's not that's a person. That's a, guy we, that's a guy we went to high school with. Yeah. Um. Yeah. By the way, we've known each other since middle school, which means now we're going on sixteen years of knowing each other. Uh, it was eighth grade, right, or seventh? Seventh grade, technically. Yeah. Okay. We'll call it eighth grade because I think that's when we started. Like we started knowing, becoming friends. Yeah, yeah, when I stopped being fat and got contacts. Hey, and then got older. I got fat and got bad vision. So hey. Yeah, we swapped. <laughs> but so well, let's see. Eighth grade would make us thirteen. Which would put it at two thousand five, two thousand six, or two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah. So we're like fifteen years now. Damn, Lord. Yeah. Ugh. That's wild. It Do you really so? Is. You you remember in How I Met Your Mother how? They they would track where they were at in their life by watching the the, the Star trilogy. Wars trilogy. Yeah. Do you do that? I, I started doing that with the World Cup. I don't know if you do that too. Um, uh, no. That, I mean, that's a very fair assessment, and that's something that's a hundred percent always going to pique my interest. So. Yeah. Like it, like it wasn't intentional, but it just so happened to fall every time we graduated. Yeah. Because when we graduated high school, 2010, it was that World Cup, and then. We graduated, like, I think I got in the tail end of 14, so the yeah. summer before. So, and then this past one was not, life wasn't as good, you know. It was a day. Well, yeah, the, the U.S. didn't qualify. So That's why. That's why my <laughs> life wasn't as good. I mean, to be fair, you could debate that, you know, it was, I mean, mine was on the way back up at that point. But, because it's summer of 2018 and I was already working with the company that I'm with now. Um, but before that, when the U S failed to qualify, which was probably a couple months before that, uh, your boy was making nine fifty an hour playing with fucking shoes. <laughs> like just and, like college. Yeah. Only I was at making, <laughs> probably making better money in college. <laughs> I think you were. Cause we were, we were at Marshall's for a while. Oh yeah, man. Memories. Memories. <laughs> Not really. God, that racist manager. Yeah, I didn't like him, but at Newport Ritchie, that one was cool. Yeah, no, that was cool. It was like having 40 grandmas. It was yeah, super they would great. bake goods, and they were glad that we could pick things up for them. Yeah, and then we got Justin a job there, and they made him a janitor, and I felt really bad about it. I know. I still don't get why they did that. <laughs> I don't get that either. Maybe they were racist too. Maybe. Because <laughs> he looks a lot more Spanish than you do. He does, even though we're equally as Spanish. Yeah, it's Hispanic, true. You guys are rather. both, uh, both, both halfies. Yep. I can't yeah. say that. I'm, I'm white. That's probably. I'll say it. Statement. We're both halfies. Okay. He just has Italian. Like his other half is Italian. Yeah. So that's how he's got the darker skin. Yeah. And I'm. But Eastern I have European. Italian and. So you, have, you have like Olive Garden Italian though. I mean, I'm like, not, I mean, no, probably like twenty percent, like a fifth. I don't know. I sh- I need to do an ancestry thing, but. To figure it out, but then the government gets my DNA. So like it's I don't know if it's win lose or lose lose or whatever. It's not the government; it's a company, which is debatably worst. Worst. Sure. (laughs) I'm just saying the thing (laughs) that like government has a lot of power, but I think certain companies have a lot more. 
Uh, I just like to go tinfoil hat every once in a while because it's funny. Yeah, but sometimes tinfoil hat's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, think of, so, like, Alex Jones? Fucking crazy. But sometimes he's right. And then sometimes he accuses kids that died of being not real. So. I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. I think that's why you have to only look at what happened, what he said before, like, 2010. Yeah, I don't know. There was like, that, what was that That secret? Was it Skull and Bones that he uncovered? I don't remember that specifically. So, Oh, I was just listening to a podcast about it. But there was some secret society that he infiltrated. And you, there's, like, videos of them burning this effigy to some owl god. And it's just full of high-powered people who run banks and shit. Oh, so maybe when he uncovered that, that's why now he's he's a puppet. Like yeah, he's a he's a puppet now. Yeah, he's a he's a useful idiot. He's a he's a puppet who's now not allowed on most platforms. <laughs> I know. God, that's Which so weird. It is. It's a little sad not seeing like his content just randomly pop up. Like I just miss his rants about making frogs gay and like. I know. It's comedy gold. It uh, really was. Like, but I, also, and I, I also can't find it anywhere. Yeah, I also think it's bad. Like, it's bad precedent to set. Like, I know that they're companies and they can they can do what they want. But at the same time, all the social media companies companies are now our town squares. So not being able to talk there is is almost, it's not quite, but it's very close to not being able to speak. Well, that's one of the things that's kind of weird about YouTube now. Like, I don't know if you still watch um, Philip DeFranco at all. Mm -hmm, um, but his show last week, one of the things that he was talking about was that um, there's been like kind of a, a terms of service change on YouTube. Um, and one of the things that they're kind of changing is that like when it comes to what they view as abusive content or, you know, potential like bullying scenarios. Um, so with that being said, one of the people that they took uh, a video down from is a guy named iDubbbz. Mm -hmm. Um, they took down one of his content cop videos that he did on another famous YouTuber who's really well known and they kind of took it down. Yeah. As, uh, yeah. Yeah. Leafy. Uh, they took that down basically claiming that it was like harassment and bullying when realistically, like from what everyone knows about it, it really wasn't. So there, and the other one that, you know, he's more of a conservative commentator that's like around it a lot is, uh, Steven Crowder. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him either. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, so Crowder is like he's kind of going through a thing where he now feels like he's now going to be demonized by YouTube because of the way that you know he portrays things. Which I'm going to be you know call a spade a spade. You, you rather than referring to a porter or, or, or a, a guy who makes videos for another media outlet, you can't just call him you know uh, the fag Latino for lack of a better term. That's some of the stuff that he was calling him. Like he's got a name. Use that name that's harassment if you're calling him un calling him that instead like so it's like basically like some of these people are going to have to change the way that they communicate even though their channel has fallen in love with them talking a certain way but if they want to have their content up and not get kicked off the platform they're basically going to have to adapt because youtube is making new rules so yeah and i i don't know i who gets to decide what is harassment that's my issue it's hard. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. It's the same reason that I, I like, uh, how do I word this? The people in power will change. So I can only trust the rules that are written. Yeah. So the rules that are written are if YouTube thinks that something is harassment, they can take it down. Yeah. But YouTube is not a single entity that's not going to change. It's a group of people who over time will change. Yeah. So, and and the fact that things can retroactively ret retroactively be taken down, like there's yeah. no there's no consistency at that. Point. No, there's not. There's not. What it is is they're just basically like I mean, they're covering to the change. Rises. No, for sure, it's a CYA. That's that's definite. Um, but that's the thing is they're trying to now adapt to the way things are. Like, does that mean that they're going to take down videos for people who are going through legal cases? Still shows that as of right now, if there's people that are being investigated for, you know, being, you know, sexually active and trying to groom minors. No, you can still get on their channel on YouTube. It's still there. Other platforms have kicked people off. 
but he's still on YouTube, you know? And I, I'm referencing another YouTuber there. But, yeah, uh, I know who you're talking about. On it, yeah, on uh, Onision. Yeah. Onision. Yeah, no, he's, uh, there's a lot of legal battles around him. He got completely kicked off Patreon, but YouTube's fine. Yeah, I think you the know? difference there is that Patreon kick people kick will kick people off for things that happen outside of their platform, and yeah. YouTube YouTube will be like, well, he didn't groom a minor on here. It's like, well, where the fuck do you think he met them? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I almost respect that more because it's a it's a hard line that can be enforced. It's true. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that I like the guy at all. Like I, I no. like I watched the same Philip DeFranco video and just seeing the clip of him talking. Like, oh, dude, you skis me out. No, he's, yeah, he's he's definitely one of those things where I'm watching him and I'm like, yo, you need to stop. Your brain <laughs> like, is broken. Yeah. Like, granted, I remember what made you famous. Uh, it, like, I remember that video specifically that made you famous. But like, did you never grow up from that? Like, because his video that made him famous was the, the I'm a banana video. Oh, that was him? That was him. Yeah, that's what started him. Okay. I'm a banana. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was Mm -hmm. already playing in my head, yeah. Yep. No, that's what what started him. And, like, just seems like from there, it's just like, no, I'm still going to be a child, and I'm going to start talking to little girls. Yeah. Ugh, gross. That just grosses me out in general, but. Yeah. How do we pivot from that? I don't know. Well, I kind of got in an argument with a guy on Twitter because he was talking about the fact that, like, he's, like, posted something about, like, retweeted the NFL, put something up about, like, Adrian Peterson running for a touchdown and, like, moving up in the record books. Mm-hmm. And he, like, posted, he's like, Adrian Peterson's still in the league and getting publicity, but now people are trying to crucify Michael Vick. and I, or, Like, crucify Michael Vick again, even though he actually served his time. And I was like... Like, I understand what you're saying, but, like, just because Michael Vick served his time doesn't mean I have to like him. He's like, but what, uh, he's like, but that's the thing is he he's trying to be a better person. I'm like, and I respect him for trying to be a better person. I, like, not respect him, but, like, I appreciate that. But, again, what he did and what Adrian Peterson did and what Tyreek Hill did and what Kareem Hunt did, they're all different things. But at the end of the day, they were still an abusive piece of shit to another living being. Like, I don't have to like them. No matter what they do to try and improve themselves, I don't necessarily have to like them, and that's my opinion. Yeah. Like, but I, I like, think I think respect was the right word, though, because if he's trying to turn himself around, then I think that's something to respect. Yeah. You don't have to like know, someone to respect them. It, yeah, I guess that's fair. That definitely is fair. Um, but yeah, no, it's like we we I mean we shouldn't forget about what he did previously. I don't think that's a, th- you know, but is it necessarily the right thing for the NFL to be honoring him at the Pro Bowl? Ugh, I don't know about that, you know? Well, well then, like, what's the point of, of prison? Well, exactly. That's that, And that's really what his debate was. And, uh, you know, that's my thing is I'm not going to, I'm not the kind of person that's going to sign a petition saying don't honor him at the Pro Bowl. I'm just going to be the person that probably not going to watch the Pro Bowl, but I'm not going to watch the Pro Bowl because of that. I'm not going to watch the Pro Bowl because it's the Pro Bowl. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I still watch football. You know, Adrian Peterson plays for plays for Washington. They're in the same division as my favorite team, which is the Giants. Going to end up watching Redskins versus the Giants at some point. So, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what the right answer to it is as to, you know, how to handle that situation. It just, you know, I don't know. It, it's such a weird weird situation to because it's like i'm trying to think of the right words to say because i think that the internet mob mentality has been one of the things of like the last decade that i have liked the least Mm -hmm. as far as like things that have started to happen you know because i understand everyone deciding that something's bad You know, everyone thinks that something's bad and saying something. I get that. But then saying something's bad and now, oh, that person's canceled and we need to make sure that no one knows about that person ever again. I don't know if that's the way that we should be doing stuff, but I don't know if that's just me or. No, I think it's a a terrible way. Like the only way people can grow is if they learn that their ideas are wrong. 
you know? Yeah, so if you exactly. make it so that they can't talk, you're not teaching them anything. You're just like pushing them Silencing. to the side and creating a new type of marginalized group or a marginalized person. But yeah, I mean, if you do it to enough people, it becomes a group. That's also true. I don't know. Like I said, uh, that's probably one of my least favorite things to come out of the like last decade though, is just cancel culture and like these public outrages that literally just shut people down before it's, there's any chance to like explain anything yeah and sometimes it's like are you really that mad yeah like there i mean don't get me wrong there's some things where i'm like yo that's fucked up but like i'm not gonna like hashtag cancel so and so like yeah like, yeah fucking what is it the ha- trending on you on uh twitter the other day was the hashtag h3h3 is over party oh yeah what did he even say um, he was making fun of K-pop, which oh yeah, to be that's fair, fucking stupid. That's, like he was making fun of K- K-pop, basically saying I don't know if it's just like a bunch of teenage girls wanting to masturbate to these little Korean boys or what it is, like, or he's like, and then he said I'm not sure if it's just like a gay twink thing, like oh, so yeah. He, he he said some you know some words that are in today's day and age stuff that you probably shouldn't say. But at this point, it doesn't matter what you're saying. You could literally just say, if you're a person of any kind of prominence, you could just say, BTS sucks, and legitimately the entire internet is going to say, you're wrong with everything. No one should listen to you ever. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's, I don't fucking get K-pop. Like, <laughs> like, it's catchy. I just don't care about it. It does nothing for me. We we like we grew up listening to p- punk and metal, so not really our I scene. Guess, yeah, I guess... I um, guess I have to wait for the next Punk Goes Pop for them to do a Punk Goes K-Pop. Yeah. <laughs> so See if I like it then. Metal's dope as fuck. You know who's a metal band now that's weird? Who? Poppy. Poppy? You know that, like, you, have you never seen her on YouTube before? No. She's, like, this little, like, blonde girl that, like, kind of, like, it talks like a robot for the most part. But she like, literally... Like, like, intentionally, or she's just very monotone? she's very i think it's a character okay um but she's like very monotone and like it's basically kind of like a baby metal 2.0 but like with an american spin kind okay. of thing but she literally just opened for bring me the horizon and sleeping with sirens on their last tour wow and it's weird like i just don't get it but I, I mean it's just it, yeah it's like people are being polymaths i mean if yeah. even if it's not amazing like uh filthy frank did that yeah when joji which like mm-hmm. Both are really good in their own way. Like Filthy Frank is gross as fuck, but there's I think I showed you one of the videos when we were trying to do Team Mediocrity. Yeah. I was like, it shot so well. The music is so good. There's like it's such a unique presentation mm-hmm. style. And then he kind of took that into his sad boy like I I, I what kind of genre is that? Uh, I mean, I don't know what it would be called. It's like um it's not vaporwave, but it's that kind of discordant, chill like it chill music to study to. Oh, um, uh, lo-fi. Lo-fi, yeah, it's like a lo-fi kind of sad boy thing. There's one uh one con where I saw a girl who uh, cosplayed as that like scene of the like lo-fi beats to study to or whatever, um, <laughs> the YouTube thing that's playing that's just always live. She just dressed up as a girl that's like in that frame and then put like the frame around her. Which yeah, is kind of just awesome. a genius cosplay. <laughs> Dude, that's so good. The music is really great to work to, though. Oh, yeah. Like, I have no problem with, like, listening to that stuff. Like, I don't know if you remember when I used to work at Meridian. Mm-hmm. Like, I would just come home with, like, new music and stuff that I just like to listen to. Like, that's what really got me into Explosions in the Sky. Mm-hmm. Which, they're super fucking great. Oh, they're um, so good. Uh, Bonobo. Um, which, they've changed what they sound like now i think they're a little bit more electronic but it was very just like chill mm-hmm. and then um uh pretty lights is one of my all-time favorites oh yeah i love pretty lights and um girl talk was also another one that was cool so mm-hmm. even though i don't know if girl talk is still a thing but it was always fun yeah it was good like good mashup stuff exactly yeah that's all it was but dude i've been doing um I started doing, I brought in one of my old Raspberry Pis and set it up at a computer at work when uh-huh. I was still there <clears throat> and just set up a playlist of um, 
like Nintendo and chill lo-fi. So oh, it would nice. go through and it'd be Mario and then then Donkey Kong and Sonic. But it's so good because that music is already made to be interesting, but not interesting enough to distract you from the game. So it's gotcha. real good to, to work to. And so in other words, that, like, go ahead. straight up underwater level? There there was a lot of <laughs> underwater, yeah, underwater level. Because it was the best soundtrack for a, a level for anything. Yeah. <laughs> The level itself sucked. I hate every oh, underwater so level. So hard, Donkey Kong under level underwater levels. They're Ugh. just, uh, just let me jump normally. I can't jump. All I'm doing is just propelling forward. Like, yeah, I do not miss that, dude. Uh, did you ever play Stick of Truth? Um, I have actually have it. Um, I've only played it a little bit though. Um, it's on Mal's PS4, so I, I haven't played it too too much. Okay, it's worth playing. Yeah. Because I got, I found it for 10 bucks. I found um, the fractured butthole. Yeah, we and have it that came, also. And it came with a free copy of The Stick of Truth. So it might be nice. what you're talking about too. Yep. But mm-hmm. So I played through Stick of Truth last week. And it was just, you know, like watching a 20-hour South Park episode. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm getting ready to do the fractured butthole. One of the Maybe? guys that I work with, one of the guys that I work with was showing me a clip Um from one of like the more recent episodes of South Park, like this current season. Mm. And it was all about the Catholic church trying to clean things up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so they were basically like sending a cleaning crew out. Um, and it was a guy driving what they called as a cum bony. <laughs> so it was literally a Zamboni and it was just making these weird, like masturbatory sounds. <laughs> Basically. So, yeah, yeah it's um, that's how the Catholic Church is trying to clean up their name is by picking up the cum. So. <laughs> God, I need to watch. I haven't watched any of the new shows of the past, like, a couple months. Rick and oh, Morty, for I, example. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't watched it. I watched uh, I mean, I'm, I'm up to date on The Mandalorian for the most part because um, I've been watching that. And there's actually a, uh, they moved up the release date for their next episode, which is kind of interesting because uh, they moved it to Wednesday, which is right before the premiere of the new Star Wars movie. So I'm wondering if oh, there's going to be yep. anything in that. So we'll find out. It's TBD, apparently. Um, so you're saying I have to power through five episodes tomorrow night? You really don't have to power through. I mean, I've so far, I've found the show to be very enjoyable. Oh, um, it's good. I just meant like duration yeah. wise oh yeah tomorrow tomorrow's a long day because we stream as well that's true yeah which i, I might end up just going to bed after this because i actually woke up super late for work today oh did you <laughs> uh yeah well with me and mal have pretty much been sharing a bed for like almost four years so oh it's yeah. one of the first times that we've really like been apart and i guess just maybe not having her alarms too or whatever it is slept through everything i had to be at work at 8 30 i woke up at like 8 15 Oof. <laughs> so I didn't end up getting a chance to make myself lunch. I had to walk Shay before I left, which that's always a pain in the butt. <laughs> like, yeah. What time did you get there? Uh, I got there at 9.05. So that's like, okay. Day. Yeah, so that's why you, you were late leaving too? Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I normally like to get there on time, I have to leave by like 8.10. I'll get there right at 8.30. Gotcha. So it's not it's not a far drive or anything like that, um, but yeah. So I woke up at almost eight fifteen. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm already way late. So yeah, walk Shay, get ready, like do my thing. But I I just didn't end up thinking to make myself lunch because it's like one of those things. Like I sucked because I felt like I got a good amount of sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, but even though I felt like I got a good amount of sleep, if I wake up late. I wake up in a bad mood because I feel like it kind of fucks up my entire day. Yeah, it just sets you off on like on the wrong foot. Which sucked because I still felt well rested. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I feel that. So you you don't want to play Rocket League? Can maybe play for a little bit. We could we could end this right now, and you can help me get my rank up in Drop Shot. Yeah, we could do that. Because I'm Gold Three, and I should at least be Platinum. That's fair. Because I, I was Plat Two when I when I finished my, my ranks and okay. then like people suck. And also I'm not fair. amazing, but it, everyone else is the problem. Not me. Yeah, no, you're uh, a perfect little angel. I'm the grandson of Jesus. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Because my grandfather's name was Jesus. 
That's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I just want to. I need to tell everyone that because otherwise that joke doesn't mean it. It doesn't land. Yeah, because I was like, I'm sitting here. I'm like, wait, your grandpa was Bill. <laughs> no, 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 brown one. Oh, the other brown one. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. My bad. Grandpa Didn't Delgado. Know. Ah, C. C. <laughs> okay, well then let's wrap up now and we'll cool. we'll go play Rocket League. All right, so, that works for me. Cool. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed us rambling, talking about whatever we talked about. I'm going to have to go back and listen to it because I didn't take notes and I have to yeah. do the metadata for this one. Oh, so, yeah, you will. Yeah, Yeah, because I can't put, I'm not going to put this on pad. So, no. okay. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we love you. And also, uh, one more big shout out again to our sponsor, uh, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Your mom's a lovely lady. Uh, Wait, did you mean my mom or just the universal mom? The universal mom. Oh, yeah. Praise Mother Earth. <laughs> praise be. Praise be. Praise, praise be. be. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> love you.